Hey, welcome. Welcome everyone to this webinar today. I'm really happy to have you here. My name is Marta. I am the Customer Success Manager at Ability. We are the makers of Server CTO platform. And we are here today to talk about uh, Mignex and how they organize data collection to promote high quality data. So before we get started, I just wanted to lay out a few practical points about the webinar and the webinar structure. Uh, the first thing is about troubleshooting. I'm assuming that um, you are hearing me, hearing me well, you are seeing me clearly, and you can see my slide deck. If at any point you feel that the sound is not okay, if you feel um, that there are there are any technical issues, let us know in the chats and we will try to accommodate accordingly. Um, the second thing that I wanted to share is if you have any questions, feel free to use the Zoom Q&A feature. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we always have some time for a discussion um, and we will manage all the questions from the Q&A. Uh, today, we are also sharing a lot of resources and information about Minex and Service ETO. So I put together um, a document with all the relevant resources for you. I will paste it in the chat window so you can take a look at it. Um, and finally, uh, we are going to hear a lot about the data monitoring process from me next today, but I was also very, very curious about hearing your data monitoring experiences. So I'm launching a poll so you can share about um, some of your pain points and some of your experiences with data monitoring processes. So if you would like to participate in the poll, just click on the poll icon um, in your Zoom window, um, and I will try to share the results at the end of the webinar. So today we are going to talk about MIGNEX. MIGNEX is a five-year research project. They have the ambitions to, to create knowledge about migration, about development and policy, um, and to present their work. We have four team members today with us. We have Jessica. She is a senior research fellow at ODI. Uh, we have Sunday, the head of data analytics at NOI Polls. And we have Rafael, um, the team lead for social research at NOI Polls. And I would love to hand over the presentation to them. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to hearing your presentation. I am presenting our experience using Survey CTO for the MCNEX project today. And as Marta already mentioned, um, I'm going to be joined in the presentation today by one of the country teams who we worked very closely with during the delivery of the survey. So the, the team is based in Nigeria at an organization called NOI Pose. Um, they've run a lot of really big surveys and they collaborated with us in the Nigeria survey, which is one of the 10 countries. So Dr. Chike, Raphael and Sunday are all on the call today and will be partially presenting, but are also available um, to answer your questions. I'm going to start off the presentation and tell you a little bit about the MCNEX project, what it's about, um, a little bit more about the survey in particular and what our um, objectives for the survey were. And, um, and then I'll start talking about the quality assurance processes that we put in place and all the different mechanisms that um, we put in place to, to ensure high quality data in the MCNEX survey. And um, so I'll get started on that, but then I'll very soon hand over to my colleagues at NOI Pause, who delivered the survey in, in Nigeria. So they're going to talk much more concretely about how they used um, survey CTO for automated quality controls, as well as um, other ways of entering high quality data. So what is MIGNEX? 
The basic idea behind MIGNEX is that um, there's a lot of focus on, on migration in, in the past, um, past decade, really, um, and a lot of focus on how to manage or control migration flows, how to, in essence, stop people from, from coming to Europe, for example. Um, and that kind of more policy focused discussion is very much disconnected um, from the more academic um, side, of, uh, side of the migration field, which has, of course, focused on many different areas. Um, but there's a big area which has looked at the migration development nexus. So looking at how development affects migration, but then also how migration affects development and um, looking at, for example, what might be some of the drivers um, behind migration. And the basic idea of MIGNEX is to um, bring these two areas together. And basically what we are doing in MIGNEX is to, we're doing research on the migration development nexus and um, we're doing that research with the hope to inform better migration policies. So the MIGNEX project is generating new evidence on migration and development. So as I mentioned, we're looking at both sides of the migration development nexus. We're looking at how migration affects development, but we're also looking at how development affects migration. Um, we're interested in all types of migration and development. So um, we're looking at it in a really broad way. Um, so, for example, with regards to migration, we're interested in both mobility and immobility. So we want to know why people migrate, but we also want to know why people do not migrate. Um, and also in terms of migration, we're interested in internal migration, international migration, return migration. So all, all types of migration. Development, I'll um, speak a little bit more about, but basically, um, we're looking at different aspects of development, specifically um, different developments that might affect migration or be affected by migration. So, for example, one way of defining development could be to look at um, changes in service delivery or infrastructure security. Elaborate on that in a minute. The MIGNEX project um, used or is using um, mixed methods data collection, um, which consists of the survey, um, the focus of the presentation today, um, qualitative data collection in the 26 research areas, and a policy review at the national level. And all of this data collection has now been completed. It was um, delayed because of COVID, so it took us longer than anticipated. But we have the data now um, for all countries and research areas. And we're now in the phase where we're finalizing data cleaning and starting the analysis. And the MIGNEX project covers 26 research areas across 10 countries. Um, so I just wanted to briefly mention um, the develop how the definition of developments again. Um, so we are looking at um, nine different specific developments um, that may affect migration or be affected by migration. Um, so for example, um, one, uh, one specific development in a research area could be a uh, major livelihood expansion that a new, for example, new um, factory opens or a new mine, which leads to creation of jobs, but then there could also be um, a livelihood collapse with, um, with a loss of jobs. So we're looking at both positive and negative developments. Some of these developments might be intentional, so they might be the result of, of a specific policy or program and others are not. And we're looking at how these developments interact with policy. Um, so I mentioned before 26 research areas and 10 countries, and you can see that um, we've got Nigeria here, so we had three research areas in Nigeria, um, down quarters um, in, in the north, part of um, the city of Kaduna, um, Awa, um, a small town in Nasirawa state, and Ekpoma, which is um, 
a, a bigger university town in, in Edo State. So about the MIGNEC survey, so um, we think that um, the MIGNEC survey is one of the largest migration surveys. It's a cross-sectional survey, so we're only doing it once. Um, and we, we had a sample size of 500 um, respondents, a minimum of 500 respondents per research area. So our overall sample side size is more than 13,000 young adults. Um, so the young adults here is um, on purpose. Um, it's, um, I wrote young adults because we interviewed um, only 18 to 39 year olds. And this group is, this population group is the one that is most likely to migrate. So that's why we're focusing on that particular group. But apart from that, we are covering um, the, the general population of young adults in each research area. So we don't sample specifically on migration status um, or, or anything like that. Each um, sample is representative at the research area level. The MIGNEC survey has um, 228 questions covering topics of migration and development. Our survey instrument is, is available online. It's one of the links that uh, Marta shared just now. Um, if you want to take a look at the questions we included and the data itself will also be made um, publicly available once we've completed the project. So in terms of quality control processes, so you can see that um, the survey was a huge undertaking. So I'm the work package lead um, for the survey. Um, and I um, worked with either MIGNIC's core partners or um, um, contractors in, um, in each of the 10 countries. Um, and as you can see, yeah, big undertaking, lots of research areas. We were um, delayed because of COVID, so there was really a lot of pressure to collect the data um, quickly during the relatively good wind COVID window um, last summer. And um, at one point, we actually had five countries um, in the field at the same time in order to make sure that um, the quality of the data collected is high and that um, teams are able to get on with actually delivering on the survey and collecting the data without relying too much on me and other core colleagues, we put a number of processes in place to ensure that they're able to do that. So what kind of measures do we put in place to ensure high quality data? First of all, we spent a lot of time on um, carefully designing the survey, of course, that's a really important aspect. One I'm not going to talk about today, but you can find um, other uh, materials on that on the MIGNEX website, including, for example, how we um, planned and um, designed the sampling process. And then also really documenting that process and being very transparent about it. So uh, yeah, I've just mentioned several times already that everything we've um, prepared is publicly available. And um, we've also talked about it at webinars like this. And I think making it publicly available also really helps um, by then having discussions with others and making sure that our processes are, and procedures are really, really strong. And it's also really helped with the country teams that we've got very clear processes, guidelines, documentation that everyone can access very easily. And um, the second aspect is um, having ensuring consistency across all countries in terms of um, how, how the survey is delivered. Um, and then also in having really strong training. And I'll talk briefly about that. And then we had data and quality monitoring at um, three different levels, um, at the numerator level, fieldwork supervisor and data manager um, level. And um, we used automatic, automated checks on survey CTO and other daily checks um, to do that. And um, that's what my colleagues at NO, NOI polls are going to talk about. 
So now I'll briefly um, talk about documentation and transparency um, and consistency in training. And then um, I'll hand over to Sunday and Raphael and they'll talk about quality control measures um, and general observations on survey CTO. Um, so in terms of documentation and transparency, I already mentioned that we really invested a lot of time in the design and carefully preparing for the survey. We piloted the survey instrument, um, a very, very final version of the survey instrument in three different countries. And we not only piloted the actual questions, but we also piloted the process um, using survey CTO, um, sampling, um, we looked at the data, so we really treated it as, as a survey in its own. And um, even before the actual pilot, we pre-piloted questions around migration aspirations, which we really wanted to get right um, to, to make sure that they were fit for purpose. Um, so we um, took a rigorous and innovative approach to the survey and really looked far and wide in order to choose the, the best approach that would, would work across the 26 different contexts. Um, so we also place particular focus on um, kind of a common denominator approach to so something that would work across all contexts. We had some countries where um, no sampling frames were available, whereas in others, a sampling frame might have been available, but we chose a sampling approach that would work consistently across all contexts. And um, the guidance and the design process and um, the, the implementation of the survey is all laid out in, um, in this handbook chapter, in this publication, um, and you'll receive the link for that. In terms of consistency and training, um, so we prepared lots of different resources and um, support during the enumerator training. Um, the training was conducted in different local languages. Um, and for example, one of the um, resources we prepared um, were different videos which showed the sampling approach in, in very practical ways using illustrations and actually doing the sampling so that um, it's very clear to people how to do it. Um, we also had an online test, um, which all enumerators took at the end of the training, um, consisting of 27 questions based on all aspects of, of the survey. And um, sometimes teams didn't perform as well. And then, um, they conducted an additional day of training before retaking the test. So it also helped to identify weaknesses. Um, and also many of the teams only selected those enumerators that scored the highest on the test. So all of this um, facilitated um, consistency and improved the quality of data collection because we really knew that enumerators um, knew how to proceed. Um, okay, so I'm going to hand over to, I think it's you first, Raphael, right? So um, for the quality control measures, uh, we adopted quality control measures across all um, components of the study. So um, I will focus a bit of, on what we did with the supervisors. Because considering the nature of the study, we felt is important for every member of the team starting from the numerator to supervisors and quality control managers to be fully aware of the expectations of the study and what is expected so of any of, of any member of the team so we had like you mentioned it earlier we had a, a thorough training for everyone and so um for the supervisors to ensure a high quality of data collection we adopted several steps to ensure that every member of the team you know stick to what is stated in the survey manual or survey protocol. So one of the things we did as supervisors was to, you know, accompany all enumerators to the field. So every enumerators were accompanied to the field, to the survey areas they were covering. So, um, and also to ensure that they, they observe the random work process, which uh, we had thorough training on, which we insisted on that. And uh, again, we, 
supervisors ensure that uh, uh, they got up to 10% uh, interview. Um, so, so witnessing the interviews of, of all the interviews conducted by each of the enumerators, they tried to uh, observe at least 10% of the interviews. I mean, watch the interviews in progress without interfering um, with the interview process. Again, we, we also did an unannounced visit to the field. So you have enumerators who are supervising or let's say two, uh, five persons in, in, in the whole day and uh, he has to monitor what each of the uh, enumerators are doing. So we did what we call spontaneous uh, check of every interviewer. So up to 10% of the interviewers were, were spot checked. Interviews conducted were spot checked in the process. So there was also a, a back check. So these, these are steps, quality control measures taken by supervisors. You know, we uh, supervisors did uh, what we call a back check of, of uh, interviews, you know, as mentioned by the supervisor, by the field managers, up to 10% of the interviews were back checked across the survey areas and across the supervisors team. About 10% of all the interviews were, were back checked. So um, we had, um, situations where we check interviews before uploading them. So as uh, supervisors, every, so what we told them, what we told every enumerator is that before they submit, before they synchronize or submit every interviews, supervisors must, you know, go through those interviews and to ensure that every part of the sub, uh, question was actually captured or responded to. So before every interview is synchronized or every survey is uploaded, Supervisors had to go through the tablets and ensure that everything is in the right direction before submission. Supervisors and the quality control managers were not working in, in silos, so they were work, they were they were strong collaboration with the team. So uh, if there's any issue or any concern, you know, raised by this, the, the data managers or quality control managers, they you know had mentioned, quickly mentioned that to the supervisors, you know, who eventually. And signal them to go and check what those uh, those issues are, especially when they are when they are highlighted. We had um, as part of the quality control measures, we had the supervisors uh, observation sheets and the supervisors log. So what these these are two documents uh, supervisors use in checking the interview process in the team. One uh, is the, the supervisors log. So what this should this you know explains what happened in the field. So if the supervisor, you know, go to do back check or go to do visits, these are recorded in the printed forms where at the end of the day, they will see that as part of the, you know, checks of the achievement per day. So this information is manually written in a form that is printed out, given to every <coughs> enumerator, and it explained um, what is, is, is expected. So uh, on the other hand, we actually have a um, supervisor's uh, uh, observation sheet. This is more like a, and an indicator that read every interviewer scored their performance. So here we have one to five of scoring, you know, gap one, one to five so item. These are things that has to be observed to know if they are strictly, you know, maintaining the protocols or the agreement reached during the training. So this is more like to, to know where the, and if the narrators are actually doing what was expected or they are deviating from the, from the rules set out before field. I think that is just that from my end. For giving us a good uh, highlight on the rules of the supervisors for the maintenance project. Now we, one thing that is very interesting about the survey CTO platform is that uh, apart from the on-site supervision role that is being taken by the supervisors, the survey, to, survey CTO platform also give room for back end supervision of the quality of the data. For example, is very possible, and this is what we actually did for the Mignes project. We were able to check the feed workers performances and flag out concerns for updates, corrections, and resolving issues. For example, it's very easy to check for how many interviews have been covered for a particular cluster of the survey, how many people are working, uh, are they uploading interviews at the right time, so the survey CTO platform gave rooms for all these quality checks. And it's also allowed for checking outliers and responses. For example, maybe it's believed that the average number of people in the household should be like six, and somebody just sending something like 100, 
immediately the software is very can be programmed and was actually programmed to actually capture and flag out any outliers in the responses given by the respondents. And when these outliers are flagged, it is the responsibility of the data manager to get in touch with the supervisors and the interviewers to ensure to check again those values by either going back to the respondents to reconfirm those values or it was a data entry error. So all these things were well allowed from the service to your platform. And it also allowed for re-interviews in case where we suspected that uh, some interviews were not conducted correctly. This software also allowed that uh, those interviews can be reconducted again. And, we, and there are some situations whereby some responses are not part of the categorized responses and it also gives room for orders to be specified. And when those orders are specified, we check at the back end to ensure that those orders that were specified were rightly written. And if it's not clear, we quickly get back to the supervisors and the interviewers for more clarity. And one interesting thing about Survey CTO is that uh, it allows for random selection of 10% of every interviews conducted by the enumerators for the supervisors to back check. So it will be randomly selected and the data manager's responsibility is to identify those ID numbers for those interviews to be back checked and will be delivered to the supervisors to be checked on daily basis. So this is about 10% of every completed interviews completed uh, by every enumerators. And when those back checks are done by the supervisor, it will be submitted and the data manager can easily check the responses of the back checks versus the main interviews. And if they are the same, fine. And if there are differences, we'll get back to the supervisors and interviewers to check for reasons why there are differences and clarifications will be, make, will be made. And this is a very interesting part of the survey CTO. And it also allows for daily checks at the back end to confirm clusters that were covered, numbers of interviews completed. In some instances, some interviews are completed, but maybe they are not synchronized. All these things can be checked, confirmed, and validated accordingly. And one interesting part of it, again, is that uh, it allows to conduct some approximate verification of the sampling strategy using the GPS coordinates. So you can see GPS location signifies, you can see it can be differentiated by the colors. Some colors, those colors represent the same interviewers. You can see the movement pattern of those uh, interviewers. Uh, four colors actually indicate uh, different interviewers that have been working, working within the cluster. And this was actually used to check maybe they're actually working approximately within the cluster boundaries or not. That's one good interesting part of the uh, CTO. And uh, it also allows for, you can see the MIGNES main survey, that's for Ghana. So this platform allows us to check for the overall submission, the GPS to check the sampling strategy. So many other things, outliers, this is in platforms where the data manager actually check on daily basis, make their own observations, and also get back to the supervisors and emulators accordingly in case of any clarifications to be made so that uh, all this process uh, towards ensuring that uh, good data quality from the field. And this is what we actually achieve at the end of the MIGNES project. And uh, you can see this is the platform, the data managers platform also allows us to check some statistics to check uh, the frequencies, average scores, for example, some of the values that were captured, so you can check the outliers, you can check the current, the warnings. There are some warnings that are flagged out and the responsibility of data manager to follow up on those warnings and check with the supervisors and get some clarifications. Finally, one good thing about the survey CTO, as I mentioned before, is that it allows to check the performance, general performance of the field workers on the field, including the supervisors regarding their back checks. And you can easily see the coverage, location. And one thing about the GPS enabling power is that uh, you can even confirm if the respondents are working in the right location or not. And there are possibility for at last checks, flagging of possible errors in entries, random selection of submissions for back checks. In fact, timestamps, you know, sometimes some interviewers can be very smart 
and they can all just be moving on with interviews without even answering some questions. So it allows for the back end to actually assess maybe those questions were actually being asked or they are just being assumed by the interviewers, which overall helps to improve data quality. And one thing that is of concern upon using the survey CTO is the questions around if quota management system can be improved upon as managed by some other data collection platforms. For example, you don't want a certain number of males to be interviewed in a particular location or by a particular interviewer. You want to manage your quota in such a way that uh, the same percentage of male and female are being interviewed in a particular cluster, even when intentionally they respond, the interviewer wants to go above what is required. The system will have to mandate you to ensure that they know you are going out of the scope of the quota you are supposed to achieve. So we are looking towards a situation whereby this can be improved upon via the survey CTO platform. And also in situations whereby there are issues with the submitted interviews, we are looking at the situation whereby the CTO platform can allow unapproved submissions to be returned to the original device rather than the current situations that allows the data manager to make corrections after getting clarifications from the field. And the data manager has the responsibility to manually do the, make the corrections, but a situation whereby the submitted forms can be returned back to the original device that is being used on the field by the particular interviewer. If some of if this option can be enabled in the survey system platform, I think it's going to be of a great advantage, especially when multiple people are working on multiple locations at the same time. And if there are situations whereby a lot of errors are being committed, rather than the data manager single-handedly making those corrections over and over again. A situation whereby those forms can be returned to the enumerators, and when they wake up the second morning before the beginning of the work, the second day, they open their tab, they notice that, oh, these interviews have been, have been submitted back. Okay, these are the areas I need to check again. This is wrong, this is right. So this is one of the areas we think that uh, after work on the surface CTO platform, in terms of data management, we are looking towards a situation whereby if it is possible that unapproved submissions can be returned to the original device. Thank you. Over to you, Jessica. Thank you, Sunday. Okay, so I am not going to take up more of your time, just to remind you that um, our handbook chapters online with very detailed resources. And also, I think you'll get the slides later, which have our email addresses on them in case you want to contact us. Thank you very much. And I can see there are lots of questions in the chat. So I'll stop sharing my screen. If any of you is, uh, is not a, yet a service CTO user, if any of you are exploring data collection platforms um, and you'd like to explore survey CTO, um, I just wanted to share our sales team contact. So I really advise you and recommend that you reach out to our sales team. They are very responsive and they will be able to guide you on how Service CTO can meet your needs um, appropriately. Um, I saw that some of you already had a few questions, so I thought this could be um, helpful to share. And if you are interested in learning more about Service CTO, um, about having some product tips, um, or being notified about webinar events, for example, just like this one, um, you can follow us on social media. Mm -hmm.